Hello, welcome to Build Series. I'm Gordon Elliott. This young lady in front of me is Paula Dean. Uh, for my uh, uh, sins in life, I discovered Paula when seven years ago, uh, when I walked into a restaurant in Savannah, Georgia, and a friend of ours had said, "You got to meet this woman." Ninety-eight or ninety-nine. Around there. It, w it was one of those years, and uh, I'll never forget y'all the day that Gordon loped into our restaurant. Uh, he was bigger than life. His feet were huge. His hands were huge. Why, well, thank you for remembering. And he had <laughs> he had the best laugh, and he was loud, and he was my kind of man. So I said, would you like to do a television show? You unfortunately said yes. And there, I did. And, and that's why we're here today at I, the Southern Table yes. with Paula Dean. I said, now when Gordon asked if I would come to Las Vegas and, and do his show... Uh, I, you know, I didn't watch a lot of TV because I was working 24-7. And I said, um, is that that show where you have to cook exactly what you find? In the person's refrigerator. In the refrigerator. <laughs> and he said, yes. Good, yeah. And I said, yes, but I'll be scared to death. I'll tell you right now, I'll be scared to death. But you're the only person. Who, uh, the woman slammed the door and said, get out of here. I'm busy. Yeah. I got my kids. Yeah. And you stepped yeah. up and you knocked on the door and said, honey, I've been in your shoes. I know what it's uh -huh. like. I'm going to go into your home now. And I, if you let me in, I'll cook a, a meal for you and the family for whatever I find in the refrigerator in uh -huh. 30 minutes. And you calmed her down. You poured her a glass uh -huh. of wine, gave her a uh -huh. Valium, sat her down. <laughs> <laughs> It's little mom, mommy's little helper in Vegas. <laughs> and, and, and you said the kids, if you say another word, I'll use the cattle prodder. And you cooked a beautiful, beautiful dinner for them. I, d I did a wonderful spaghetti casserole, one of my family's favorites. So, and then I did fried pies. You can remember that? Oh, I my god! I can't remember what I had for lunch. Gordon, that was the first meal I ever did on, on TV. on television. You're yeah, right. yeah. Is it in the book? It's in one of them. Damn, you know but what? That would have been a lovely... I, I, that would have been a beautiful <laughs> segue to the book. But that was the start of a 12, 13, 14-year relationship with this man. And uh, I loved every minute of it. He had me do some wild and crazy things. You made me so fat. <laughs> she made me so fat. Yes. I'm, I I'm held a, a gun to his head and uh -huh. said, you must lift that fork. <laughs> you made me, the second pair of Not. teeth into every Polar dish was mine. Because <laughs> Polar would get up there, oh, isn't this gorgeous? And then she'd eat it, and there'd be a moment of silence. Because did you notice when Polar eats something on television, you want to draw a curtain around it. It's a little intimate. Something about, <laughs> I was like, I had to look away. There was something else going on. Y'all, Gordon would run up there and grab the food food from my hand, from yeah. my mouth, well, mm. and gobble it. Gobble it it's, it's, that was fantastic. <laughs> No, you, but it was great. But we, we had so much had fun. fun over the years, y'all. I know one time, and we started out shooting this show in Millbrook, New York, at his home. And we lied. We told everybody yes, it was Savannah. and I couldn't hardly tell that lie. It was so no, hard. You didn't tell it. I put it in the thing. Yeah, I, I know, lied. I, I, well, you see, here was the problem. Paula lived in a very, very nice little condo. They wouldn't let us shoot a TV show. I, I, I had my kitchen. I had to turn it into a TV set in uh -huh. uh, six weeks. And it was a beautiful kitchen. It was beautiful. purple stove. So uh, I said, listen, come on, we'll tell everybody. Because upstate New York looks just like Savannah. Uh -uh. But for two years, well, I figure if they're going to cancel the show, who's going to give a rats anyway? Yeah. And well, they, they uh, sport they spotted those tags, those car the tags, New York, uh, the New York license tags. tags on my truck when you drove it around. My God, Mariotti, we should have thought of the details. <laughs> so then she's forty. I can't lie anymore. I bought a house in Savannah, and I'm going to do it up, and it's going to be our studio. I said, Paula, if you're prepared to invest two million dollars on on that. I'll come down. And then we did it. We, uh -huh, we, we did, did it. We did it. We and did then you it. moved into the big house, and you said, you ain't never going to shoot a show in my big house. It's too nice for you. <laughs> well, guess what? What? <laughs> I'm shooting, shooting a now. show in it. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, can we get on? You, how much you want to talk yes, about Yes, but I want to tell okay. you all about this one day. So there we are up in Millbrook, New York. One of Gordon's fabulous ideas is I'm going to be riding in a freaking hot air balloon, scared to death of them. So that hot air balloon, I, I had cooked lunch for a basket for like a picnic, y'all. I got in that hot air balloon 
something went amok. Yeah, it did. I'm sorry. And it, it went off. took off before it was supposed to, and it was going sideways. And I can see Gordon running across his lawn, jumping up in the air to catch this long string that was hanging out of the basket because it wasn't supposed to be going right now. Well, I had now. two problems. One, you were in the balloon, and secondly, I didn't have a camera in the balloon. <laughs> so I would have lost the whole damn balloon and a whole day's worth of shooting. So I was like, no, no. And, and listen, on the thing. he caught it, y'all. He caught that string. That. He jumped up in the air. I was magnificent. Huh? Yes. And honey, <laughs> you were magnificent. I was magnificent, Paula. You were more than that, Gordy. Thank you, darling. And you pull that damn basket down, uh -huh. and I got out of it, and my catfish belly was hanging all out. It was pretty. It, my shirt had come all up. Let's I not go didn't to care. Too much detail. <laughs> all I wanted to do was get out of that balloon, and I had to go into your house, mm -hmm. and it was a quite a little afternoon before I could settle myself down. I know. I was so frightened. You were so bright. And you then he really had me on this motorcycle thing one okay, time. Okay, well, hang on. Come on. Let's get back to the book. Okay. <laughs> that was just a couple of things that can come I, to my can mind. I, can I point out something about the book? Yes. <clears throat> you must have very lazy fans because I'm a fan and I'm lazy and I know this, uh -huh. right? You know why? Because wow. it's like, oh, I've got to read the whole book. But then at the end. <laughs> which no, honey, for you, this is a lot of pictures. This is, this is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of pictures. And at the end, you've got pictures of everything in one, like a little Pinterest bit at the back. Well, it, you so know, to me, the worst part, y'all, is. Uh, when our kids come over now, what is there? Maybe 25 of us, 20. My family's grown. You just said. And so I'll see, say, see tell me what y'all want. I don't mind cooking it. It's trying to figure out what to cook, you know? So I said, I'm going to put some menu planning into this book. What? So like if it's uh, a Sunday morning breakfast, you know, I've listed everything. If it's a backyard party, you know, everything. You can go buy it or not, or you can mix and match. So that's something new that I've never done, and I really like that helping hand mm -hmm. for menu planning. Mm -hmm. Does loving Paula Dean food uh, qualify as a pre-existing condition in your new health plan? <laughs> No, but this is, you know what this is? I think moderation. Moderation yeah. is the whole key, Gordon. Right. And, um, you know, you have to have a cheat day. I don't like the word diet. I can't stand that word. Well, you look I good, though. hate it. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's just making some changes. And uh, I. <laughs> we're all sitting up here and sucking in our stomachs. And, and wearing spanks. No, right. I don't wear spanks. I don't like them. Moderation. Yeah. For you. Mo moderation. But yeah, when I first started on my weight loss journey, I went into my kitchen and I threw everything in there that was white out of the kitchen. And that's, you know, a lot of good stuff. The white flour, white sugar, mm -hmm. white potatoes, white bread. The only white food I kept was cauliflower because it's like free. There's no, almost no calories in cauliflower. But then after I got my, my weight off, then I started trying to practice moderation. You know, I said, we well, all can have a cookie. It's the other four or five that we eat, you know, that, would really do the damage on us. But this, I, I read through the book. Yeah. I, I, I obviously love your food. And this is really, this is like minutes to cook. These are all big casseroles and one pot wonders. It's well, not fancy. There, there is a chapter on that. There's, yeah. there's, I really feel like there's something for everybody okay. in this. Right. Um, yeah. Have, I mean, have, have I plugged the book enough and can we go back to all the bad things I made you do? Oh, Gordon, I've cussed you. I know. You've, you've. Yeah. So let me tell you something. While about loving Paula, you, you well, I have cussed you on, on, Wednesday, on the motorcycles and rider <laughs> balloons. The only thing I didn't get to do was push you off a bridge on a jumpy cord. But I wouldn't do that to a woman of a certain age. So uh, on Wednesday nights, <laughs> when we would uh, do Paula's show, we'd kind of break it up. We'd send her home early. We'd get a massage. Remember, we used to send the messages to your house. Yes. And then in the evenings, we'd come around for a poker party. Yes. And this sweet little southern grandmother took me to town. You are a lion. You took 
thousands of dollars from me. I most certainly did and not. And from y'all. all of my crew. And behind that sweet little southern exterior is the mind of a mathematician and a card count. Where is Michael Groover? My well, husband's around here somewhere to attest the fact that you, and you raped took his money. and pillaged and you, every one of us. And you t- and you took his money. But I love that Raped about you. and pillaged. I love that you. I love that. Uh, I love the fact you got this sweet little thing going on, and you're like, okay, Gordy, no one. Oh, else. you're gonna make me cuss again, Gordon. Let's talk about some of your restaurants. Okay. Um, <laughs> you go. Where, where? Look at those feet, y'all. No, no, don't look. My feet are size 15. <laughs> it takes a lot of real estate to support this uh, this weight. <laughs> can we go back to some of your restaurants? Yes. Uh, how many restaurants can one woman run? I mean, is it probably high? one? You, well, because you, I know. Even you when, have to have a good team, but Gordon. You, but you're in there. I used to. I used to be shocked. You would at the at, when you had so much going on. You, I came to you one day and said, "You're a little tired." You said, "Ah, Gordon, I was in the kitchen at 3 a.m. frying chicken. Mm-hmm. Show, show those guys mm-hmm. how I like my chicken fried." <laughs> You're a control freak. You do that stuff. I am. You know what? I think I think when it comes to my food, I think I am a control freak. Because I started this business in uh, 1990, 1989 with $200, y'all. And every day, I mean, that was all I had. That was it. And uh, thank you, honey. It, w- it was hard. It, it was hard. But... When you're given something, you're everything. You know that you just can't take chances with it. No, every. I mean, I was fighting for my children in my life. I was fighting for our lives. And you can't let that part go. No, Mm. no, no. So yes, I was a control freak. And it was good. I, you know, I saw many sides of you, Paula. I saw, did you? Well, you know, we spent a lot of time together under yes, pressure. Yes, we did. And and I always saw you behave uh, beautifully, even with people who didn't get it, so to speak. I mean, I saw you with folks in your restaurant, and they were they were working as hard as they could, and some of them were good at it, and some yes. of them weren't so good. And yes. You're always very kind to them. You're always very kind to them. I mean, even Thank in that kitchen, you. and God knows kitchens are, we tried to do a reality show once, remember that? We tried to shoot a reality show of you in the kitchen. I looked around and said, you know what, some things shouldn't be shot. And the back of a kitchen is one place that shouldn't be shot. That's right. You know, not that I've got anything to hide, no. but people are coming there to enjoy the food. You right. know, it's all about the food. But the work you would do, you have to be another person in that kitchen. You have to. You have to. And I really you respect for you, you for that. I mean, I, 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 I you love your to. success because of Thank all the hard work you do. How the boys? They're great. How's Jamie? What's he up to? They're great. My boys are great. Uh, they're both home while they send Mama out to work. <laughs> oh, that is so sad and so true. <laughs> That is so sad. No. Uh, Jamie is spending a lot of time. You know, we finally got uh, our second restaurant in Savannah open. Okay. Uh, Paula Dean's Creek House. Down by the water. Beautiful. Yes, where Uncle Bubba's was located. He's running that. Uh, Jamie spends a lot of time there, yes. And it's doing great. And then we've got uh, Paula Bobby. Dean's Family Kitchen All right. in Pigeon Forge and Myrtle Beach. Mm-hmm. And uh, Bobby is doing great. Bobby um, could spend every moment at the gym. He loves exercise. And his best friend, Coach Carter. Yeah, I love that. Oh, my God, what a, what a, what a lovely oh man Oh, my God, he is. what a body. But I've noticed Bobby's losing his hair. Is he taking that badly for a young man? Yes, it was yeah. hard for Bobby. Yeah. It was yeah. hard for he's Bobby. He's going to hate it when he's watching this. But he makes up for it in personality. I think he's so handsome. He's a very good-looking man. I think he's so handsome. And I say that as... With yeah. all deference. No, he's yeah. a very talented television broadcaster. Thank too. you. He, listen, he is so good. I have a, I have a show, a live show every Tuesday night on Evine, and if you don't know what Evine is, it's a shop at home network. Mm-hmm. And Bobby was on last Tuesday night with me. Um, he was actually sharing his pots and pans. <laughs> uh, beautiful. He got a beautiful. Right. Set of pots and pans. How, how young is your youngest grandchild? He will be a year around Thanksgiving. That's Anthony's little boy. That's Anthony's. And has he got a line of baby clothes yet? Have you licensed him? Not that yet. No? Okay. But Sorry. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I, I've got six grand boys, y'all. 
you, all boys. The deans only produce boys. We don't know how to do indoor plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> Clues on that one, Jamie? You want to touch that one? <laughs> but you've got, you, you have a gorgeous family. They're the Thank center of you. your life. Yes. And it's inspired everything you've done. And the truth of what you do in your life comes out in everything that you produce. Uh, yes. Which is probably why you resonate with your family. You know, I love, I love my work, Gordon. And I've been amazed at, through the years, you know, all the time, fun times we spent uh, on set. I've been amazed that the people that have come up to me and said, you, you don't know how much what you did helped me. Mm. Uh, I just needed a smile or a laugh. Yeah. And uh, that that has just touched me to the mm. core. Mm. Uh, because when you're looking down that camera lens, you have no idea who's watching or what's going on in their life. Mm. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 it's very touching to have somebody come up and yeah. say you saved my life you yeah. got me through chemo yeah. you got me through my divorce I you you have helped me with my agoraphobia you don't run into agoraphobics I ran into one this morning really and you usually don't run into agoraphobics because they're home you know with our head under the blanket but yes I uh, a man came up to me uh, when I was at Cheddar mm -hmm. this morning and he said you know, you've helped me so much. You should have brought him along. We could have frightened the life out of the guy. Well, he was actually working in that building. And Isn't I said, that great? I said, well, you're out and doing good. He said, well, I have my good days and my bad days. Isn't that great? But um, that was one of the hardest things for me to share. But because I said, you. I don't want folks to think I'm crazy. But, yeah. But that launched you. Yeah, those 20 years that I struggled with it, mm. I was home cooking. And... Uh, Improving on my skill. <laughs> well, and, it, and who knew it was setting you up for a great life who and a knew? great career? Who knew? And if you want to know more about that story, you buy the book. It ain't all about the cooking, y'all. Which will be available, I'm sure, online. <laughs> on that. Well, you can link through someone who'll sell that to you. Thanks for joining us today, Paul. Oh, my gosh, Gordon. You know I love you. And uh, I was so excited about getting to see Gordon again because, you know, I... We no longer have a show on Food Network, so we don't. And my, my little boys will grow up playing around. Oh, my gosh, my yes. They Gordon has got three little boys. Well, they're not so little anymore, y'all. But I would be back there, you know, looking at the camera, doing a recipe. And, and, uh, Angus, and Duncan. Angus and Duncan would be down here in front of me, behind the counter with their army men. And, you know, I'm kind of stepping like this. <laughs> People probably thought something was wrong with me. <laughs> you, had, you, you had two little but, boys and a dog underneath it. Well, it was because yes. it was the house. Yes. And yeah. they loved it. They thought that Paula Dean was uh, well, their I personal Well, I liked it that book. way. Yeah, I liked it that way. Hey, boys, you want a peanut butter ball? I've gone, whoa, <laughs> this is cool. And Gertie, Gertie the dog. You know, people still ask me to this day about Gertie. Uh, Gordon had this most fabulous dog that had never had anything but dog food. Yeah, well, you ruined her. That was it. I did. I did. I know. But I adored Gertie. She followed me everywhere. Yeah, she's a good I'd dog. I'd get a break and I'd lay down with Gertie. Yeah. Um, well, that'll be our next interview. If you're trapped on a desert island between all the dogs that you love and all the beautiful parrots you have, which would you eat first? Thank you, Paula Dean. <laughs> Paula Dean, ladies and gentlemen, and her new book, At the Southern Table with Paula Dean, classic recipes to share with family and friends. Thank y'all so much. Bye-bye.